The pun, also called piranha major, is a form of wordplay that suggests two or more meanings by exploiting multiple meanings of words, or of similar sounding words, for an intended humorous or rhetorical effect. These ambiguities can arise from the intentional use of homophonic, homographic, metonymic, or figurative language. A pun differs from a malapropism in that a malapropism is an incorrect variation on a correct expression, while a pun involves expressions with multiple correct interpretations. Puns may be regarded as in-jokes or idiomatic constructions, as their usage and meaning are specific to a particular language and its culture. Puns have a long history in human writing. Sumerian cuneiform and Egyptian hieroglyphs were originally based on punning systems, and the Roman playwright Plautus was famous for his puns and word games. Punning has been credited as the fundamental concept behind alphabets, writing, and even human civilization. Typology. Puns can be classified in various ways. The homophonic puns, a common type, uses word pairs which sound alike but are not synonymous. Walter Redfern exemplified this type with his statement, to pun is to treat homonyms as synonyms, for example, in George Carlin's phrase, atheism is a non-profit institution, the word profit is put in place of its homophone profit, altering the common phrase, non-profit institution. Similarly, the joke, question, why do we still have troops in Germany? Answer, to keep the Russians in check, relies on the oral ambiguity of the homophones check and check. Often, puns are not strictly homophonic, but play on words of similar, not identical, sound as in the example from the, Pinky and the Brain, cartoon film series. I think so, brain, but if we give peas a chance, won't the lima beans feel left out, which plays with the similar, but not identical, sound of peas and peace. A homographic pun exploits words which are spelled the same but possess different meanings and sounds. Because of their nature, they rely on sight more than hearing, contrary to homophonic puns. They are also known as heteronymic puns. Examples in which the punned words typically exist in two different parts of speech often rely on unusual sentence construction, as in the anecdote. When asked to explain his large number of children, the pig answered simply, The wild oats of my so gave us many piglets. An example that combines homophonic and homographic punning is Douglas Adams's line, You can tune a guitar, but you can't tune a fish. Unless, of course, you play bass, the phrase uses the homophonic qualities of tuner and tuner, as well as the homographic pun on bass, in which ambiguity is reached through the identical speakings of B.S. and B.A.E.'s. Homonymic puns, another common type, arise from the exploitation of words which are both homographs and homophones. The statement, being in politics is just like playing golf, you are trapped in one bad lie after another, puns on the two meanings of the word liars, a deliberate in truth, and as, the position in which, something rests, an adaptation of a joke repeated by Isaac Asimov gives us, did you hear about the little moron who strained himself while running into the screen, door, playing on strained as, to give much effort, and, to filter. A homonymic pun may also be polysemic, in which the words must be homonymic and also possess related meanings, a condition that is often subjective. However, lexicographers define polysemous as listed under a single dictionary lemma while homonyms are treated in separate lemmata. A compound pun is a statement that contains two or more puns. For example, a complex statement by Richard Whateley includes four puns. Why can a man never starve in the great desert? Because he can eat the sandwiches there. But what brought the sandwiches there? Why? Noah sent ham, and his descendants mustard and bread. This pun uses sandwiches there, sandwiches there, ham, ham, mustard, mustard, and bread, bread. Similarly, the phrase, piano is not my forte, cleverly links two meanings of the words forte and piano, one for the dynamic markings in music and the second for the literal meaning of the sentence. Compound puns may also combine two phrases that share a word. 
for example, where do mathematicians go on weekends? To a Mobius strip club, puns on Mobius strip and strip club. A recursive pun is one in which the second aspect of a pun relies on the understanding of an element in the first. For example, the statement, pi is only half a pi. Another example is, infinity is not infinity, which means infinity is not in finite range. Another example is, a Freudian slip is when you say one thing, but mean your mother. Finally, we are given, a manual doesn't pun, he can't, by Oscar Wilde. Visual puns are used in many logos, emblems, insignia, and other graphic symbols, in which one or more of the pun aspects are replaced by a picture. In European heraldry, this technique is called canting arms. Visual and other puns in word games are also common in Dutch gable stones as well as in some cartoons, such as lost consonants and the far side. Another type of visual pun exists in languages which use non-phonetic writing. For example, in Chinese, a pun may be based on a similarity in shape of the written character. Despite her complete lack of phonetic similarity in the words punned upon, Mark Elvin describes how this peculiarly Chinese form of visual punning involved comparing written characters to objects. Richard J. Alexander notes two additional forms which puns may take. Graphological puns, such as concrete poetry, and morphological puns, such as portmanteau, use. Comedy and jokes puns are a common source of humor in jokes and comedy shows. They are often used in the punchline of a joke, where they typically give a humorous meaning to a rather perplexing story. These are also known as fagoots. The following example comes from the movie Master and Commander. The far side of the world, though the punchline stems from far older vaudeville roots. The final line puns on the stock phrase, the lesser of two evils. Captain Aubrey, played by Russell Crowe. Do you see those two weevils, Doctor? Which word you choose, Doctor? Matarine. Neither. There's not a scrap of difference between them. They're the same species of Kirkulio, Captain Aubrey. If you had to choose, if you were forced to make a choice, if there were no other option, Dr. Matarine, well, then, if you're going to push me, I would choose the right hand weevil. It has significant advantage in both length and breadth, Captain Aubrey. There, I have you. Do you not know that in the service? One must always choose the lesser of two weevils. Puns often are used in the titles of comedic parodies. A parody of a popular song, movie, etc. may be given a title that hints at the title of the work being parodied, substituting some of the words with ones that sound or look similar. For example, collegiate a cappella groups are often named after musical puns to attract fans through attempts at humor. Such a title can immediately communicate both that what follows is a parody and also which work is about to be parodied making any further setup unnecessary. 2014 saw the inaugural UK Pun Championships at the Leicester Comedy Festival hosted by Lee Nelson. The winner was Darren Walsh. The competition included the line, My computer's got a Miley virus. It stopped twerking. Walsh went on to take part in the O. Henry Punoff World Championships in Aston, Texas. In 2015 the UK pun championship was Leo Curse. Literature non-humorous puns were an or a standard poetic device in English literature. Puns and other forms of wordplay have been used by many famous writers, such as Alexander Pope, James Joyce, Vladimir Nabokov, Robert Bloch. Lewis Carroll, John Duns, and William Shakespeare, who was estimated to have used over 3,000 puns in his plays. Here is an example from Shakespeare's Richard III. Now is the winter of our discontent made glorious summer by this son of York. Shakespeare was also noted for his frequent play with less serious puns. The quibbles of the sort that made Samuel Johnson complain. A quibble is to Shakespeare what luminous vapors are to the traveler. He follows it to all adventures. It is sure to lead him out of his way, sure to engulf him in the mire. 
It has some malignant power over his mind, and its fascinations are irresistible. Elsewhere, Johnson disparagingly referred to punning as the lowest form of humor. In the poem A Hymn to God the Father, John Dunn's Married to Anne Moore reportedly puns repeatedly. Son, son, in the second quoted line, and two compound puns on, done, done, and, more, more. All three are homophonic, with the puns on, more, being both homographic and capitonymic. The ambiguities serve to introduce several possible meanings into the verses. When thou hast done, thou hast not done, for I have more, that at my death thy sun shall shine as he shines now, and here to for in having done that, thou hast done, I fear no more. Alfred Hitchcock stated, puns are the highest form of literature, rhetoric puns can function as a rhetorical device, where the pun serves as a persuasive instrument for an author or speaker. Although puns are often perceived as cliché, if used responsibly a pun dot can be an effective communication tool in a variety of situations and forms. A major difficulty in using puns in this manner is that the meaning of a pun can be interpreted very differently according to the audience's background and can significantly subtract from a message. Design like other forms of wordplay, peronomasia is occasionally used for its attention-getting or mnemonic qualities, making it common in titles and the names of places, characters, and organizations, and in advertising and slogans. Many restaurant and shop names use puns. Kane and Abel Mobility Healthcare, Sam and Ella's Chicken Palace, Tycoon Thai Shop, Planet of the Grapes Wine and Spirits, Curl Up and Dye Hair Salon, as do books such as Pies and Prejudice, comics and films. The Japanese anime Speed Race's original title, Mago Go Go, refers to the English word itself, the Japanese word for five, and the name of the show's main character, Go Mifuna. This is also an example of a multilingual pun, full understanding of which requires knowledge of more than one language on the part of the listener. Names of characters also often carry puns, such as Ash Ketchum and Goku, the protagonists of the anime series Pokemon and Dragon Ball, respectively. Both franchises which are known for including second meanings in the names of many of their characters. A recurring motif in the Austin Powers films repeatedly puns on names which suggest male genitalia. In the science fiction television series Star Trek B4 is used as the name of one of the four androids models constructed before the android data. A main character, the parallel sequel The Lion King one and a half advertised with the phrase, you haven't seen the one half of it. Why Borua Vodka employed the slogan, enjoyed for centuries straight, while Northern Telecom and used technology the world calls on, on the 1st of June 2015 the BBC Radio 4 You and Yours included a feature on, Puntastic Shop, titles, entries included a Chinese takeaway in Airtown Centre called, Airswok, a kebab shop in Ireland called, Arbra Kebabra, and a tree surgeon in Dudley called, Special Branch, the winning competition entry. Selected by Lee Nelson, was a dry cleaners in Fulham and Chelsea called, Starchy and Starchy, Peronomasia in the media. Peronomasia, also known as the pun, has found a strong foothold in the media. William Sapphire of the New York Times suggests that, the root of this pace-growing, use of paranomasia, is often a headline a writer's need for quick, catchiness and has resulted in a new tolerance for a long-despised form of humor. It can be argued that peronomasia is common in the media, especially headlines, to draw the reader's interest. The rhetoric is important because it connects people with the topic. A notable example is the New York Post headline, Headless Body in Topless Bar, Peronomasia is prevalent orally as well. Salvatore Atado believes that puns are verbal humor. He talks about Pepicello and Weisberg's linguistic theory of humor and believes the only form of linguistic humor is limited to puns. This is because a pun is play on the word itself. Atado believes that only puns are able to maintain humor and this humor has significance.
It is able to help soften a situation and make it less serious. It can help make something more memorable. And using a pun can make the speaker seem witty. Peronomasia is strong in print media and oral conversation so it can be assumed that Peronomasia is strong in broadcast media as well. Examples of Peronomasia in media are sound bites. They could be memorable because of the humor and rhetoric associated with Peronomasia, thus making the significance of the sound bite stronger. Confusion and alternative uses there exist subtle differences between Peronomasia and other literary techniques, such as the double entendre. While puns are often simple word play for comedic or rhetorical effect, a double entendre alludes to a second meaning which is not contained within the statement or phrase itself, often one which purposefully disguises the second meaning. As both exploit the use of intentional double meanings, puns can sometimes be double entendres, and vice versa. Puns also bear similarities with paraprosdegian, sillipsis and eggcorns. In addition, homographic puns are sometimes compared to the stylistic device antanaclasis, and homophonic puns to polyptoton. Puns can be used as a type of mnemonic device to enhance comprehension in an educational setting. Used discreetly, puns can effectively reinforce content and aid in the retention of material. Some linguists have encouraged the creation of neologisms to decrease the instances of confusions caused by puns. History Puns were found in ancient Egypt, where they were heavily used in development of myths and interpretation of dreams. In China, Shen Dao used she meaning power and she meaning position to say that a king has power because of his position as king. In ancient Iraq, about 2500 BC, punning was used by scribes to represent words in cuneiform. The Maya are known for having used puns in their hieroglyphic writing and for using them in their modern languages. In Japan, graphomania was one type of pun. In Tamil, sledai is the word used to mean pun in which a word with two different meanings. This is also classified as a poetry style in ancient Tamil literature. Similarly, in Telugu language, slesher is the equivalent word and is among one of the several poetry styles in Telugu literature.